Welcome to ADHD Whiskey, my name is Matt, and today I'm answering a question that I've been asked probably 65,000 times. Today I'm answering the age-old question, what bourbons am I hunting in 2023? It's the fall, it's November, baby, and guess what? It's allocation season. Every year when the chill hits the air, the fall season brings the most allocated and desired bottles of bourbon to the shelves. Well, maybe not the shelves. Actually, not the shelves. That's wrong. They never hit the shelves. But distilleries release their most allocated and desired bottles in the fall when the chill hits the air. Once those bottles get to the distributors, God knows what happens to them. And maybe God doesn't even know. But typically when I'm asked, Matt, what bottles are you most looking forward to? I always have the same answer. All of them? I don't know, the allocated stuff, the stuff we can't get, the bottles we never see, and if we could see them, we couldn't afford them because the store owners would charge like 10 times MSRP. But what I decided to do was actually make a list. Actually make a list in a specific order. This list is my top 30 bourbons, or whiskeys, that I am actively hunting for in the fall of 2023. If, of course, I could buy them, at MSRP, which of course isn't gonna happen. So if I were presented this list of 30 bourbons, this is the order of which I would choose to buy them if they were offered to me at MSRP. The first two bottles I put on the list are number 32 and number 31 because they didn't make the top 30. Actually, I just put them on the list as a big F you, as a middle finger. I put these on the list and then I realized that if I saw them at MSRP, I wouldn't even buy them. Wild Turkey Masters Keep Voyage and Wild Turkey Generations, I'm not buying them. I can't, I'm not gonna buy them. There's a Wild Turkey Voyage on a shelf near me for like 350 plus tax and guess what? Not buying it. Wild Turkey increased their prices and then retailers put an additional markup on top of the increased prices, which means that the increase on the increase was increased so much that I am just like this. No, absolutely not. Not doing it, don't care, sign me up for never. Also, Wild Turkey Generations, 450 a bottle? 450 a bottle. Is that accurate? I'm pretty sure it's 450 a bottle. 450 a bottle, add tax on that. We're paying over 500 bucks for a bottle of whiskey, and what? are we even doing? It's not even extra old or extra special bourbon. It's just blended by the three Russells, which is super cool, which is super cool. But for 500 bucks, I can buy myself a Power Wheels. Pow, pow, Power Wheels. Now we're driving for real. The next on my list was also a middle finger to Wild Turkey. Their Wild Turkey Single Rick House 2023 release. I was like 300 bucks, not buying it. And then this morning I got an email from Wild Turkey saying that their single Rick House release was gonna be available at 10 a.m. and I went on the website, which sent me to reservebar.com, which is a super shitty website for whiskey, and it was $300 and I tried to buy it and it actually worked and I, all of a sudden I bought it. I don't know if I'll get it. I doubt I'll get it, but I bought it for $300 plus tax and shipping, which was probably a mistake. Probably shouldn't have done that, but I did it. Will I regret that $300 on a single Rick House Wild Turkey product? Time will tell. I was thinking about making this into two videos, but I decided to put it all in one video. Who cares how long it is? Number 30, Knob Creek 18, batch two, the 2023 release, 175 bucks. I love last year's version. Let's friggin' do it. Number 29, Remus Gatsby, 2023 release. I believe it's around 250 to $275. If I ran across it today, would I pick one up? Oh, I don't know but I would be tempted to. I really enjoyed last year's Gatsby release and my good friend Cameron over at Drums and Dram says this year's is very good as well. So number 29, Remus Gatsby. 28, the 2023 release of Russell's 13 year at 150 bucks. I think that it's probably a no brainer at MSRP to pick up a 13 year wild turkey release, right? I have last year's release that was gifted to me and I absolutely like it a lot. Finding one at MSRP, like every other bottle on this list, is gonna be next to impossible, but if I ran across one for 150 bucks, absolutely, Russell's 13, me up, baby. 27 on my list, Angel's Envy Cask Strength Bourbon. I've never owned an Angel's Cask Strength bottle. 
I really enjoy them. I think that they're very, very good. They're not super cheap at about $230 plus tax MSRP. But if I came across one for that price, it would be hard to pass up. Number 26, also Angel's Envy, but this one's a bit more special. 2023, they're releasing Angel's Envy Cask Strength Rye, just like the regular Angel's Envy bourbon, the standard rye version of Angel's Envy, I'm not a fan of. But if you cranked that maple syrup waffle up to cask strength, color me interested. I am very interested. We're talking $270 plus tax if they sold it for the manufacturer's suggested retail price. So it's a pretty penny for something that might not turn out to be fantastic. But I think I would pick one up if I had the opportunity. Number 25, 2XO Dixon Denman, his release, The Gem of Kentucky. The Gem of Kentucky is 200 bucks, but it's supposed to be Dixon's more like extra super special barrels. And since I'm a big fan of the 2XO line in general, if I came across the more expensive varietal, then I would be $200 poorer because I want to see what Dixon's best barrels have in store. Number 24 is a series of three bottles. If I came across a Hardin's Creek bottle, either the Claremont, the Frankfurt, or the Boston, for $170, I would be very happy to bring one home. Last year's Hardin's Creek, Jacob's Well, the 15-year release, scored really well with me and made the list of best bourbons of 2022. I did have the opportunity to try two of the releases this year, Frankfurt and Claremont, and I thought that they were awesome. And I would love to add a bottle to my garage. I almost said bar, but I don't have a bar. I have literally a garage. Next up on the list, a $90 bottle at MSRP. If you come across one of these for $90 and don't buy it, then you are dumb. Because even if you don't drink it, you could at least like trade it for something. A Van Winkle 12 year bourbon for $90, I would have to pick one up. I would have to pick one up and I would be excited to do so. Would I open it and drink it? Hard to say. I would be very tempted to trade that bottle though for something I would find more desirable. Number 22 on my list, Old Forester 1924. Is it gonna be released in 2023 or 2024? Not sure. I'm also not sure about the price on it, but what I do know is it's a 10 year old Old Forester product, which makes it one of the only age stated products in Old Forester's lineup, and it's the newest addition to their Whiskey Row series. I'm very interested to see what a 10 year old Old Forester will taste like at 100 proof. 1924 from Old Forester has got me excited. Number 21 on my list, Evan Williams 10 year 110 proof 10th anniversary single barrel. That's a mouthful. Evan Williams 10 year 10th anniversary 110 proof single barrel. Evan Williams is Heaven Hill Distillate. So basically it's like a Henry McKenna 10 year single barrel with 10 more proof points on it. What's the price? Couldn't find it. Is it gonna be released in 2023 or early 2024? Not sure. Is it gonna be a distillery only release? Heck if I know. I'm not even sure if it's gonna be distributed to the masses or the matses, but I do know it's exciting. And if I could come across one for a reasonable price, I would be ecstatic. I'd love to have a bottle of that. Number 20 on my list, the fall release of Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond. The spring release I have here, I got lucky to pick up a bottle of that for around $200. Was I extremely happy with the liquid inside of it? Uh, to find out, watch this video up here. But for 200 bucks, I would be super happy to pick up the fall release of Old Fitzgerald Bottled and Bond. Do we know how old that release is yet? No, 10, 9, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, who knows? If I came across one for MSRP, it would be damn near impossible to say no to. Number 19, the first BTAC on the list, Thomas H. Handy for $125 MSRP. I would love to get my hands on a new release of Thomas H. Handy. I have owned one bottle of Thomas H. Handy before in my life. It was a gift to me, a 2011 release. Thanks, Jack Johnson, you glorious mother bugger. But that is the only bottle of Buffalo Trace Antique collection that I've ever owned. And I would love to come across one and pick one up for MSRP, which definitely won't happen, but I can dream. Number 18 on my list, a new batch of Stag which used to be called Stag Junior, 23A, 23B, whichever one I could get my hands on, for like $70 MSRP, I would be super thrilled to come across one, even though we all know that an MSRP bottle of Stag is like, it's just, you're not gonna, just, uh, no, 
Keep dreaming, bitch. Number 17 on my list, Sazerac 18 year. The older variety of a rye whiskey in the Buffalo Trace Antique Collection. I've never owned a bottle and would love to have one. For 125 bucks, I could not say no to Saz 18. Number 16 on my list, Michter's 10 Bourbon, 2023 release. Supposedly older bourbon in it. I did review one on One Ounce Wednesday. I thoroughly enjoyed it. I would love to come across a bottle. And for around $185 MSRP, I would pick one up like right away. Number 15 on my list is a $170 bottle, also from the Old Forster Distillery, which I've talked about earlier. This one is the annual release of their birthday bourbon. I've only ever owned one bottle of birthday bourbon, which ironically was also a gift from the glorious Jack Johnson. It was a 2012 release and was magnificent. Would I like a bottle of Old Forster birthday bourbon sitting right here? Heck yeah. But like every other bottle on this list, you just don't come across it because the distributors distribute them to people that they love. And I don't know any distributors. And I'm hard to love, hard to love, or something. Which leads me to a very good point. If you're able to get me any of these bottles at MSRP, email address is in the description below. Number 14 on my list, E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof $90 bottle and fantastic. It's not quite George T. Stag but it's also not quite stag. E.H. Taylor Barrel Proof is like the cousin Eddie of allocated barrel proof Buffalo Trace products. Number 13 on my list, Old Rip Van Winkle 10 year. Old Rip 10 year has an MSRP of 80 bucks and a lot of people love it. A lot of people say it's overhyped, but for 80 bucks, a 10 year old Buffalo Trace Old Rip Van Winkle bottle sitting on the shelf would be just amazing. I would love an old rip tenure. Never owned one, probably never will, but if I came across one for MSRP, I would just go nuts and be super happy. And that's why it made number 13 on my list of bottles I would purchase in 2023 if I came across one for MSRP. Number 12 is another Van Winkle product, the 13 year Van Winkle Rye. I actually have a sample of Van Winkle Rye supplied to me by the glorious Bill Cavanaugh in my one ounce Wednesday box that eventually I will pull out of it and review, but for $130 at MSRP, I would do a happy dance to come across one on a shelf that they would be willing to sell me. Don't mind if I do. Number 11 on my list, Four Roses 135th Anniversary Limited Edition Small Batch. Around $200, I heard it's fantastic. I got lucky enough last year to find the 2022 special release Four Roses on a shelf. I think I paid like 250 for it, but that was an incredible find on a shelf. If I could find this year's version, the 135th anniversary for the same price or less, I would be pumped. I would be super pumped because those limited edition Four Roses get really, really, really good. That brings us to the top 10, the top friggin' 10, the top 10 bourbons I would be willing to purchase at MSRP if I came across them in a store or someone were willing to sell them to me. Number 10, the most expensive bottle on this list. I do say I would purchase it if I came across it at MSRP, but I have a hard time thinking that I actually would because the thought of spending money on something is easier than actually spending it. But if I came across a Blade and Bow 22 year bourbon at MSRP, I don't know if I would be able to pull the trigger at $550 or not. Part of me wants to say I would because I've never seen one before and I've heard about how glorious they are. But the other part of me has never spent that much money on a bottle of whiskey before and for good reason because not a lot of whiskey is worth that much money. The law of diminishing returns in the whiskey world is very real. So after taxes over $600 for a bottle of whiskey, could I actually do it? I don't know, but luckily I'll never have to find out. Number nine on my list, Old Forester President's Choice. This is roughly around $180, $200 bottle. It might actually be distillery only. I'm not quite sure if they distribute to any stores in Kentucky or not, but I've always wanted an Old Forester President's Choice. That's why it's made my top 10 list of allocated whiskeys or bourbons that I'd be super ecstatic to buy at MSRP. I've tried a few in the past and I've loved them. They're so damn good. But just like everything else, the chances of me getting my hands on one, very slim. Number eight on my list is a Heaven Hill Heritage Collection 18 year, 
which I believe is the 2023 release of their Heritage Collection. I couldn't find the price on it, but I know that their suggested retail prices are reasonable and I would be willing to pay a reasonable price for an 18 year old like barrel strength Heaven Hill product. Sign me the heck up. That's like Elijah Craig 18 at barrel strength and want so hard. The top seven here are basically tater salad, but since I've never owned a bottle of any of these before, just deal with it, bitch. Like this is what I want at MSRP. If I can get my hands on it, I'd be so dumb not to buy it. Number seven, Eagle Rare 17, $125, 17 year old Eagle Rare. Yeah, gonna buy it. Number six, another BTAC product, William LaRue Weller. 2023 William LaRue Weller in my hands for $125 plus tax. Oh, it's a dream. It will never come true. But if you're comparing MSRP to quality of whiskey, there's no comparison. That's why these are at the top of the list. Number five, George T. Stagg, 2023. Oh, I've never owned a bottle of any of these and I want them so bad. Number four, Pappy Van Winkle, 15 year, $140 for Pappy 15. It's magic. That would be magic. If you've never had Pappy Van Winkle 15 year, then you are in the majority. Pappy Van Winkle 15 year is glorious, amazing, wonderful, delicious. And some people think it is the best Pappy of them all. Not me though, because number three on my list is Pappy 20 year. I am a fiend for oak. $230 for a Pappy 20. Yeah, like obviously and immediately, which means number two on my list is the even older version of the Pappy Van Winkle lineup for a $330 price tag. We're talking Pappy 23. It's my favorite Pappy. And the thought of owning a bottle makes me happy. Like really happy. Like really, really happy. But not happier than my number one bottle. If all of these bottles I just listed were on a shelf in front of me, if they were all on a shelf in front of me and they were all at MSRP, and I was only allowed to buy one. If they said, Matt, you can purchase any one of these bottles at the manufacturer's suggested retail price. I wouldn't even think about it. I would walk directly up to the 2023 release of King of Kentucky. For $300, I'd pick that King of Kentucky up off the shelf, set it on the counter, and I would just bust out $1 bills. One, two, three, four, five. $298, Oh, there's tax. Let me write you a check for that. King of Kentucky is the bottle that I've always wanted to own. I've always wanted to own a bottle of King of Kentucky more than any other bottle of whiskey out there. Sure, there's Michter Celebrations and there's Double Eagle Very Rares and there's Eagle Rare 25 now, Michter's 20, Michter's 25. All of those bottles though, I couldn't afford if I ran across them, even at MSRP. They're completely out of my price range. So this list was bottles that I actually could afford if I came across them in the wild. Could I afford all of them if I had the opportunity to buy all of them? No, but we all know that's not happening anyway. What a fantastic list I just made. Thank you for watching the video. I'm not sure how long this will be edited down, but it took me a damn while to shoot. In the comments below, was my order anywhere near what your order would be? What did I miss on the list? I'm sure I missed releases. I tried to make this a pretty comprehensive list, but listen, I'm not that smart. So I'm sure I missed a bunch of things that should be on this list, but are not. So if I missed them, put them in the comments below. If I have them out of order according to you, put that in the comments below. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. This was a fun list to make, and so far I crossed off one. If Reserve Bar actually gets me the bottle of single Rick House Wild Turkey, the rest of them though, probably not. Probably not. My name is Matt, this is ADHD Whiskey, and like I always say, keep your head in the clouds, but your mind on dreaming big and dreaming dreams that have no possibility of coming true. Whether it be a vacation or a staycation or a promotion at work or a new swimming pool, a Christmas bonus that the Griswolds will never get, seven nuggies in your six piece chicken nugget meal, a zero cavity checkup at the dentist, 
your jeans buttoning in the fall. Whatever you can dream as big as you can dream it, just dream it. Because if you can dream it, you can wake up from it. Unless of course you're dead, in which case, hopefully you continue to dream good dreams. <laughs>